say if these rocks didn't cry if you didn't praise me these rocks would cry out amen, amen. I don't know about you but I'm not gonna let a rock cry out in my come place on. come on amen amen hallelujah amen Rick give me a little bit more of this in the house please just a little let praise be the weapon that silences the enemy let praise be the weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing. 
your name in the dark and it changes everything We sing with all we are, we claim your victory Let it rise, let praise arise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch those giants fall Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift you high With all creation cry, God, we praise you Oh, 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 oh. we praise you Oh, 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 oh. let faith be praise Let faith be the song that
that we breathe you're worthy Lord of every word that we speak every song that we sing you're worthy Lord of all of our praise tonight Father God we just want to worship you Lord we want to fall at your feet just worship you Lord draw us into your presence tonight we came here to have an encounter with you God we came to meet with you tonight Father God meet with us Lord meet with us Lord we welcome you Lord we welcome you God Inhabit the praises of your people tonight, Father God. Inhabit the praises of your people, God. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. song we could ever sing you are worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
spoken many times on this subject matter on the wheat and the tares in times past um, many for many years in different ways the Lord has given me and the Lord has given me something a little different tonight but I want to share what I believe what God has given for us here today um, because we need to know how to battle we do we need so many Christians don't know how to battle spiritually they don't know how to see God and pray but you can you can see God and pray read the word and be obedient that way you got to have discernment. You got to have guidance of the Holy Spirit to guide. Guide. I need. I need that guidance because um, you heard me say before. If I if I make decisions just based on hindsight or my experience, I will blow it every time. Sometimes the Lord will ask us to do things that we really don't realize. Why do you want me to do that? Why do you want me to go there? Why do you want me to go talk to my enemy that hates me? Or 
You know, why do you want me to go say sorry to my in-laws? Amen, praise God. <laughs> Lord knows exactly why. I, I, not part of my notes, but I, 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 just one scenario. I think I shared this years ago, but I ministered to a gentleman one time. Uh, it was 93, 94, somewhere around, and, and he was in his room in bed, and I went to go lead him to the Lord, and he wouldn't do it. He just kept telling me, nope. Nope, nope, he wouldn't do it. I said, you want to, I, I, the whole plan. Nope, 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 just wouldn't do it. I, I tried several times, go to the house once a week. Nope, 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 nope. And to the point, really, I'll be transparent with you. I said, I'm done with this dude. <laughs> he made a decision. And I think I actually spoke that out loud to Pearl. I said, I'm, he, he, just, he just says, so why, you know? And then one day, the Lord, out of nowhere, the Lord says, go over there and go now. And I want to answer God and say, that ain't God, because I've been going every week. <laughs> the devil just wants to get me mad. And for a minute, I'm thinking of an excuse not to, and the Holy Ghost said, go and go now. See, I didn't really realize that the Lord was already preparing this man. So when I got there, he was already weeping. When I asked him, want to accept Christ? Right away, he said, yes. Out of nowhere, I never said out of nowhere, but the Lord just dealt with him, and he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And a few days later, they found him dead on the floor in his kitchen. They found him dead on the floor in the kitchen. I was, you know, I was able to go and to you know, help with all that. But sometimes the Lord asks us to do something. So we have to have discernment to be able to know. And in this battle, a lot of us uh, will have a difficult time, and sometimes we lose these critical battles because we can identify, uh, as I've talked to you before about the hosts, those individuals that the enemy is using, people that are real close to us, that in reality you'll see by Scripture, I'm going to give you tonight, that are there to, some of them are there to literally burn you. Yeah. And we allow them real close, and there, some of them are designed to burn you, to get you to fail. You won't see this portion of Scripture text, but it, just paraphrasing in Matthew 13, uh, 18 to 23, you won't see it on the screen. Uh, it, it, it talks about, you know, paraphrasing that if we don't understand uh, the parable of the sower, that we won't understand any of them. It implies that if we fail to understand the wheat and the tares, we will end up being confused about the nature and the practice of the evil in this world. We need to understand how the enemy works and how he comes against us. Because many times we just look at something that's obviously bad and we say, ah, it's obviously bad. You know, anybody can identify that. What's obviously not good or not a good influence but there's powers, spiritual powers that are, that, that I'm going to give you the scripture right now, that are secret powers that, that sometimes we can't identify. And the Apostle Paul said this in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the secret power of lawlessness, in other words, chaos, disorder, disobedience, doing the crazy things, the secret power, don't miss that, of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. In other words, the foul spirits are at work, but they're limited as to what they're allowed to do because the Holy Ghost is the one that limits them. Like, like when he came against Job, he had to go get permission from God to come against Job. And he, he tore Job up. Once God gave him permission, he done whooped him in every way he could. He, he tore up all his, he got rid of all his money, his wealth, everything. Then God gave him permission to come against his kids. Kids killed all his children, sons and his daughters. Then God gave him permission to come against his health and tore him all up. But he had to get permission that way. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the, 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 when the enemy has permission that way, there's no limit to what he'll do. But the scripture here tells us very clear that the enemy is limited, but yet there's secret powers that he has the ability and he's allowed to use against you and I. And we need to be able to identify those things because we know the foul spirits are at work. So paraphrasing Matthew 13, 1 through 9, we hear that Jesus telling us the parable of the sower, of the seed that is scattered and that is planted and how some landed along the path, which is, I'm gonna start right here in Matthew 13, um, uh, verse number four. I had one through nine on my, my notes, but it'll be verse number four. Matthew 13, it says, some landed on the path and the birds came and ate it up. Verse five, some landed on rocky places 
that have not much soil. Sun came, scorched it. It dried because they had no root. Um, I don't know why this is on seven, so I don't know. Six is not there, but seven. Other seed fell on thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Verse eight. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. I want to go just a little bit deeper in verse number eight. Verse eight is describing, is described as a word that you receive. You understand it, you believe it, and you put it to practice, thus producing kingdom fruit, good soil. It's evident. So it's talking about that it's producing good fruit, multiplying. You know, God blesses you with something and you go start praying for people and people are getting saved. And as you know, 100, 60, 30 people are getting saved and you're laying hands on the sick, people are recovering. There's, there's evidence of the fruit. That's awesome. That's an exciting time to be used of God that way in, in any form but of God. Nine says, who he has ears, let him hear. And he explains everything after that and he just, uh, he explains everything about what he had just told them. So now he tells them this in Matthew 13, verses 24. I'm jumping around now. I'll, 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 I'm going somewhere with this. Matthew 13, 24. Jesus told them another parable because he had just told them the parable of the different seeds land in different places, what worked and what produced and what didn't. So he tell, Jesus told them another parable, verse 24. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in, the, in his field. In other words, the man sowed good seed in his field, verse 25. But... While everyone was sleeping, his enemy came, his enemy came and, sowed, and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? Verse 28, an enemy did this, he replied. The servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because you are, while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together. That's crazy right there. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into the barns. Let me go back a little bit. Verse number 25. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sown weeds among the wheat and went away. Sleeping being we're dropping our guard. We're no longer praying like we used to pray. We're no longer digging into the word like we used to. Well, I'm busy now. I don't got to attend church. We're sleeping, we're not entertaining the things of God and we don't want to get up, we're being lazy about ministry and we put everything else in front of God. It says when they were sleeping, the enemy placed them there, then he left. Look at verse 26, going over again, verse 26. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, in other words, when the fruit and that we grow in Christ, when we begin to grow in maturity, when it becomes evident to everyone around you and them that God is using you, that is when, not before, when it's evident to everybody else that you, God is doing something through your life, you, you're, you're stepping up in ministry, it says then and only then that weed appears. So the Bible says, verse 26, then the weeds also appeared. In other words, you can't identify them at first because they look the same. The only reason that the farmer was able to, to identify them is because when the blade produced in the wheat, the weeds didn't. So watch this. Verse 26, when the weeds sprouted and formed heads, when we begin to produce the blade, verse 26 again, then the weeds also appeared. You can identify them once again at first 
They might be attending the same church you attend. They might live in the same household that you live in. Yeah. They might live in the exact same house you live in. You can't identify them that way. They might be going to the same Sunday service Wednesday night or Tuesday night that you go to. They might be going to the same celebrate recovery you go to. Same Bible study, they'll be right there with you. They'll drink from the same spiritual well that you drink from. Stay with me. That's Bible. The weed, the tares, did not surface. They didn't show their true colors. They did not blow their cover until the evidence of what God is doing in you, thus the blade was evident, is when the wheat became evident. The weed became evident, not the wheat, the weed. But it grew together, they looked identical, and they got the same water from the farmer. They were tilled with the soil and put nutrients into the soil. They got the same sun, they grew together in the same rows in the same fields. But once God began to use you, it was identified, something's not right with those around that brother. And the brother even identified it. The sister, the family began to identify it. That because now I'm standing forward, I'm moving in God, and I'm being obedient to what God has called me to do. And all of a sudden, not until then, for years, they will grow by your side and they'll be with you all these years. They're your, they're your compadres. They're your, you, you, they, they, they dedicated your children. Godparents. But because you weren't doing what God had called you to do, they were able to stay there not being identified. But until the blade and what God is doing through you, you it surfaced and they said, oh, I'm not doing this. The, 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 the real cause became evident now. Is Babel, stay with me. They did not show their true colors until you stepped up and the blade was evident. They did not show their true colors. They look just like the wheat. They're growing just like the wheat. They're exactly the same. They praise God the same. I've been going to church with them together for years. But verse 26 is not until the wheat began to produce fruit that the tares began to show its purpose. In India, I wrote this down, there's various weeds that are sown that literally take years to get rid of. It's called, a, and I'll, I don't know if I'm going to probably mess it up, but it's um, Zizania Z1. That's what it's called in India. And these weeds are deliberately sown in your enemy's field. They're deliberately sown in your enemy's field because the enemy will never identify them. He'll feed them, he'll water them, he'll turn the soil, and he'll raise them up, and he will not see them until harvest. These, this type of weed, it says, are placed there when you want to cause havoc amongst your enemy. When you want to cause anger, you want to cause, you want to cause problems in their field. This is the weed that they use. You back in the day, you just go punch somebody's tire. They would plant this type of weed in their enemy's field. So once it was visible to those around you that God is doing something, once again, the blade has surfaced, then the weed exposes itself for what it is, and not until then. Stay with me. But this weed does several things. This is what it does. I studied this thing for weeks, literally, just to get this little bit of information. I, I, I studied it for weeks. Um, but it does, it, it, this weed... If you look at it also, it's also called a, it's called a Darnell weed. I preach on the message of Darnell weed. It's called a Darnell weed too. But what it does, once the wheat has produced its head slash its blade, 
once it had produced its blade and it's evident, once again, that now it's identified as a true weed of God, it's being used of God, it's, it's going to produce fruit that way. And it's grown. Can you get rid of those lights, my brother, or quit playing games with them? This is what the agricultural experts actually say. This is what the experts actually say, that what this weed will do. This is what it says it'll do. It says it grows, this is what they say, this is what it said, I'm just quoting, it says, as it grows alongside, once it identifies the fruit, it leaves all the others alone, and it, this, this Darnell weed, it leans over to the weed because it's the same height. It says it will lean itself over the wheat that produces blade and it'll begin to twirl itself around it and it'll suffocate it like a, like a bulk. It'll suffocate it once, but it, it won't touch it before that. It'll grow together by side by side and it won't mess with it. No one will see it. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank you. Both of them praising God. But once you and I produce a blade... It says it leans over and it twists over the wheat and it suffocates it. That's what the, that's what the farmer says. The experts say that. It said it, it, it'll, it'll suffocate it and it'll destroy it. Go back to verse 27. It says that the servant noticed the weeds now based on the damage it had done and asked, where did these weeds come from? And the reply is in verse, in verse 28. The enemy has done this. The enemy has done this, but yet we're kicking it with them. We're having barbecues with them. We're hanging out with them. That's why I'm saying you have to have a form of discernment to understand. It said the secrets that the enemy has of the lawlessness, the secrets, that's only going to be revealed by discernment. You can't base on hindsight. Because all we did was hang out with Torah people. I feel at home amongst all these crazy folk. Yeah. So we won't, we won't see it as a bad thing. Oh, but God has called us to be to the Torah people. Yeah, but not to be kicking it with them and doing crazy stuff. So the enemy, the servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them out? Verse 29, I'm almost done, listen. No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Verse 30, let both grow together until the harvest. So what he's saying, in this journey in Christ, once again, I said it, you will have people in ministry, but soon, but soon you will begin to see something that you had not seen before. You will see how they will come to your spouse or to your kids and start imparting certain words or things that are causing division amongst you and your wife or your family. You will see people coming that you trusted coming against your, your job or your ministry. You'll see them make small remarks you'll, 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 or they'll, they'll come straight out against you big time, you know, all out. They'll try to ruin your marriage, come against your kids. The sole purpose, the scripture said, is a bad seed that has grown right alongside of you while you're producing kingdom work. That's why Philippians 2, 12 and 13 says, that everyone has to work out their own salvation. Let me tell you this. All the years that I've been in ministry, all these years that I've been in ministry, I've witnessed firsthand that there has been folks that were Darnell weeds. And I've seen it. I can give you dozens of examples that were literally, that were growing up with everybody in ministry. And when the evidence of the blade came up against the people of God, when they began to move in things of God, they, they, they be, it became evident that who they were. And me, I've always been, what I've been, what I've been my position, my job, my, my position, I've always been one, like Pastor Frank and I, we, good cop, bad cop. I'm the one that's going to apply the discipline or I'm going to apply, I'm going to pull people from ministry or I'm the one that's going to tell them you got to step down or I'm going to, I'm going to offer the correction or whatever. I'm, I've always been that way. But if I'm going to say it like this, I was worse when I was a lot younger, first in ministry. I always wanted to fix everything. I'm calmed down now. I'm cool, you know. And so what I did when I caught the Darnell weed, 
When the darn nail weed became evident and I seen what I was doing coming against people, and they've been friends for years, ministry, all that, and they began to come against the people of God, I noticed it, and I began to yank on the darn nail weed. And I began to pull the darn nail weed from ministry. I began to pull them from environment. And the craziest thing began to happen. The same people that they were coming against now seeing me as a bad guy. Why are you coming against them? And even some of the wheat that was being choked out. Well, how come? And the Darnell weed had kids that loved God. But when I yanked the Darnell weed from the ministry, I uprooted wheat with it. And I'm being transparent, I jacked up families that were wheat because I tried to pull the Darnell root, the weed, out, but I pulled the wheat with it. Mm -hmm. The Lord's telling us, you have to have that discernment. You you better identify that. As soon as this thing, as soon as you start moving for God and this, this weed, this Darnell weed surfaces, you're gonna hear a different language from those weeds. You're gonna have a diff- you're gonna see a different thing from those weeds. That brother's now checking out your wife a little bit different now. That's what the Darnell weed does. Yeah. All of a sudden they'll say, We're gonna take your kids, we're gonna take your children to the Christian concert. And it, it, that's not what it was. That's what I'm telling you, you better have that discernment or you're gonna lose this battle. He said, let those that have ear, let them hear. We better see, we better have a discernment. We better be in prayer. Although you're, you're, it's saying right there, you'll be yanked out with them because we don't have an understanding. We don't see that. We don't see the people. We don't see the weeds. We don't, we're growing with them and we don't, we don't see that. We're, don't make comments that your wife or your kids or they'll say things. Doesn't matter, don't tell you to cut everybody loose, but you, they'll be identified. The Bible, they'll be identified you have to make a decision what you're going to allow. I talked about that a few weeks ago. What you're going to expose, you're, you're in charge of that. You're the priest of the household. It, it's determined on you how much exposure you're going to give to your family. What you're going to allow to your wife and your kids. You've got to make a decision. The wife might be like, oh, praise God, yeah, bring them over. You've got to say, uh-uh, Lord, show me something right here. We're not doing that. We're not going to that wedding. We're not going to that barbecue. You're not going, you're not going to the coast of that sister. Yeah, but they're all my friends. I don't care. You're not going. I'm not telling you to do that. You have to, you have to know that. But once again, get ready. I'm just telling you right now, according to what the scripture says, when you start moving for God, these things are going to service. So the weeds were allowed to stay that way. They would feed, they would eat the same bread you would eat that way. But you know what thing that caught my biggest attention, man, when I was reading the what the experts were saying. It says that the wheat harvesters, this is what they noted. They were, they were, known, they were saying that, they noted it down, they were saying that. Because some of, the, some of that Darnell weed, some of that weed during harvest time, when they're being thrashed to get the weed out, to get the, you know, the, 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 to get the weed out, some of the Darnell weed went through, the weeds went through. And some of that weed got mixed in with the wheat and it was turned and all that, and it was made into powder for bread. But the expert that I noticed and I highlighted said that when some of that weed got mixed in with the wheat that was made into powder for bread, and the bread was made, it changed the way the bread tasted. Crazy. It said it changed the way the bread tasted, but the bread was made from the wheat that was of God. But because we allowed the wheat to be mixed with the, with the, with the Darnell seed, with, with the weed, it changed the taste of the bread. I'm like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. And immediately the Lord gave me this scripture right here, 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 14. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Hmm. You can be faithful to God. 
So you're, if you're going by scripture, you're growing with, with weed. You're growing up with weed. And you're going to have to identify that. But look at this. Look at the beauty of knowing Christ. Look at the beauty of the, uh, the foundation of who we are in Jesus, what God has placed inside of us. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in me. If you watch by the blood, it dwells in you. Look what Isaiah 6.13 says. And though a tenth remain in the land, in other words, talking about the root, the, the, the stump, it will again be laid waste. But as a terebinth and oak leaf stumps, when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump of the land. After you're gone, after you're gone and buried, the man of God leaves a holy seed that will begin to produce fruit through your bloodline, through your children, and through your grandchildren. After we're gone, the stump remains and be, begin to produce powerful, powerful fruit in the things of God. And I believe with all my heart, the Lord has given me these passages and these scriptures for you guys for a reason. He's not given to you, say, oh, that was powerful. And just take off. One ear or the other. You're going to be held accountable for what you hear. I'm being held accountable for what God gives me. He deals, like I say, he deals with me first. If you're not going to move according to what you hear, you're going to be held accountable for it. I don't care how long you've been serving God or how long you've been in ministry. We're going to be held accountable by God. You better watch out for your family. You better watch out for your kids and your grandkids. As men of God, you need to watch out for other people in the ministry because other people don't have no idea. They're just walking around like Dudley do right, trying to do all do good and everything. They don't have no idea what the devil's doing. It said the secrets of the lawlessness of the enemy. The secrets. Yeah, and how he works disobedience, division, anger. And somebody can just come to you and say, do you know that one brother? He said you were a punk because of this and that. Or he can make a false accusation. You know, they said you were, that ain't true. That's enough right there to make people say, you got to be, well, I'm going to sock this dude up when I see him. Yeah. I'll be straight with you. I have a tendency to get people mad. <laughs> because sometimes I'll speak like this when I'm talking to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. But because you know why the Lord says, you might not, ever, you might not get a second chance. And if you're going to patty cake everybody, you're, they're not going to get what I've called them to get. And you heard me say before, I'm not telling you to rebuke somebody unless you have to, but I'm just saying this. When you minister to the lost, love them and encourage them, bless them, help them, be kind to them. Don't, don't condemn them. Don't judge them. Just pre present Jesus, the blood. Or shall, love them. And don't, you don't got to tell them how, uh, how, what kind of drug. You don't got nothing. Just love them, encourage them, and bless them. Help them to know Jesus. I'm not the Holy Ghost. I'm, it's not up to me to clean them, to help. The Holy Ghost will do that. Our job is to present Jesus to them, get them saved. But here it comes. If you say you love Jesus, the Lord says if he proclaims to be a brother and a follower, the NIV says if he proclaims to be a follower of the way and he's doing this nasty, ugly, it doesn't say, oh, encourage them. He says, rebuke them sternly. He doesn't say, oh, just go ahead, hold their hand and, you know, just love on them and buy them a burrito and stuff and just, you know, just encourage them. I mean, you can do that. But it says if he's, if he's one that proclaims to be a follower of the way and he's doing those things, he's not being a good example. His integrity is not there in Christ. It says rebuke them sternly. So I got a way of getting people mad because I'll rebuke them if they're not acting right. Yeah. Once again, that's why I don't get invited nowhere. Amen, brother? And I'm good with that. Praise the Lord. Don't invite me to your house then. 
because I'm going to rebuke sternly if I have to. Yeah. Don't tell me your brother in Christ is over here acting crazy. Yeah. Don't say you love your wife, you have a rubber neck and everything, everything. Don't do that. Yeah. Act right. Okay, Holy Ghost says I'm done. It's all stuff. <laughs>